can uh, take over the presentation and Thank then uh, and then start. Dear ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon, good evening, good morning. I hope that all of you are doing well. I'm Dominic Platner, the ITTF High Performance Manager, and I am very happy and proud to warmly all of you to our fourth and last lesson of the ITTF High Performance and Development Four Classes with Massimo Constantini, and the topic will be professionals. Before uh, starting with the lesson, I would like uh, to talk shortly about our lesson code, about our rules. To all the attendees, please mute yourself and turn off the video. Just Massimo's and my micro and webcam will be on. Please don't touch anything regarding uh, the recording or our presentation slides. And please leave all your questions in the chat and we will try to answer as many as possible of them in the question and answer part of the lesson. Thank you very much. Today, Massimo and, and I will talk about professionals and, uh, and it cover the elite level. We want to deliver you an understanding of what is needed to reach the top level. The class content for today will be as follows. Um, on the one hand, we do have the performance elements, uh, including goals, planning, training and competition. And on the other hand, we do have the high performance elements, which contain the following topics, strength and conditioning, staff, sports psychology, technique, strategy and tactics. And I wish all of us a very informative and educational lesson. And now the floor is yours, Massimo. Thank you very much, Dominique. Welcome to all of you to this uh, final uh, lesson of the, this interesting, let's say, uh, journey with you. And uh, today we have, as usual, a very rich program. And um, yes, as uh, Dominique said, uh, uh, we, have, uh, we are going to discuss about our very familiar elements about the performance. Uh, uh, the strength conditioning, and then uh, we have uh, more more things uh, to be added to to this, and uh, we can start basically with uh, what is the uh, the, the high performance uh, behind what what would happen actually to to reach there, and uh, and uh, we will uh, try to understand uh, all the interaction as usual, all the the, the things. Uh, uh, but always in order to give you the the right, uh, uh, we hope the right uh, uh, stimulus in uh, in order to uh, to learn more, uh, to get more interest on this, and uh, and get at the end uh, uh, better. So um, high performance and behind, uh, of course, uh, we have a few things to consider um, when when we talk about high performance. Uh, Let's let's uh, um, take this uh, uh, analogy. It's, uh, it's like when you buy a car. You buy a car, a very good car, and uh, and then uh, you 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 start with the basic, uh, with a certain equipment included, and then when you go higher and higher, you have the same equipment but adding more, adding more uh, more features of uh, of that car. So uh, at the end, the car can be, you know, more powerful, can be more, uh, yeah, giving more uh, better performance, uh, maybe more comfortable, more of everything. So we have to take in consideration what we have done before and uh, what we can add uh, more to have the high performance. So uh, we have a few things, uh, as usual, I, I'm listing. So whatever you see there, it's based uh, on the on the facts that we normally we see. So training adaptability, of course, uh, uh, high performance uh, is going anywhere to train and then uh, having different situation to to uh, to face uh, and uh, and so on. So different also uh, training partner and uh, 
and everything different. So adaptability is very important. Uh, is one of the quality of a, of a player. The volume, selection of competitions, uh, the importance of the training sessions and the match. Uh, of course, fitness and uh, recovery. We will see again with the help of uh, of Dominic uh, uh, facing this uh, this topic. And uh, again, actually not again, but this is something more. The expert stuff. This is very important. We will see one by one how ideally it could be uh, uh, being high performance. Uh, player and being the coach of a high performance player so we have to see this in the, in the, in a different way as a player but mainly as a coach and at the very end uh, we have uh, let's say a, a compacted uh, a chapter of uh, technique strategy and tactic because at that level uh, we will explain later on, but let me tell you now, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's all together. It's, we, we cannot separate techniques uh, with the tactics, uh, strategy. It comes in a whole. It comes in a, in a sort of a performing. It all depends to the other one. So uh, this is very important to consider the player in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in this way. So we have the conclusion. And uh, where were we, of course, as I said before, uh, in the previous three lessons, we have, uh, we have uh, explained so many things, uh, uh, and now we are in the, in the, in the, in the final stage, uh, or maybe <laughs> I put uh, can be the initial stage, uh, you know, to give the, the, the final input, uh, how to go to the next, uh, next uh, level. So um, um, before Dominic was, talking about the performance elements, and uh, you are very familiar of that, uh, the goals, planning, uh, training, and competition. Uh, but uh, of course, uh, I said, uh, as I said, we have to go behind uh, those, uh, those, those uh, uh, elements, uh, and we have to take them to the, to the next level. Starting uh, with, the, with, the, with the goals, uh, and now it's time <laughs> to have expectations, of course. And, uh, it is a sort of a step by step, but all together. I said at this stage, the things come come in in a whole, coming in a sort of a, you know a flexible matter that you have to deal the, with the with the players in 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 many different ways. And uh, and then of course we have the the everyday everyday goals. Uh, uh, we have uh, uh, your and uh, partners' goals and competition goals. When we have everyday goals again, here you have something that we have discussed maybe, maybe in the first lesson, if I well, uh, if I well remember. It is the consistently tangible. So every day the, the player should, should have that feeling that uh, he, he, she reached the, that, uh, that particular goal. Uh, your and partner's goals, of course, training with success. This is another part, as I said before, you know, it's something coming from the very basic, but it goes throughout the a career of a player. So training with success is not from your side only or from your player, it's also from the partners. The player is never alone. Player is always with someone, uh, somebody this, the other side that also uh, giving the, the 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 support for the performance, and last uh, competition goals. And now it comes the moment that uh, it's not that uh, oh, okay I lost okay fine it doesn't matter we'll see next time uh, I will try. Now expectations uh, are going are going pretty pretty high. So I would say a very simple let's say. Uh, uh, um, uh, um, equation, you know, okay, at that level, I don't lose with the, with the weaker, but I just, you know, I want to beat the, the higher player, you know, in terms of, uh, of world ranking. And this, of course, uh, can increase uh, the overall, uh, you know, the, the, the confidence of the own status, uh, we've seen the other, the other, uh, uh, the other week, maybe, and, uh, but also thinking always to aim something something on the top something something better if in the competition i finish in the in the top 32 okay this is next time i don't i don't i, I will not accept 32 i want to go for the top 16 and so on 
So uh, the next, uh, as uh, Dominic said, uh, is, uh, is the planning. Uh, this time uh, we have a few things uh, uh, the same, uh, uh, as you can see, club and national team planning. But uh, this time, due to the nature of the uh, of the volume of the um, of the competition and training, we have a we have a sort uh, for the player on and off uh, planning. You know, uh, it's uh, it, you have to deal with this because you have a one day player. Maybe you don't have for the next two days because he has other other stuff. Then again, we go with the national team. Then again, we have a, a recover. Then start again. Then traveling and then the club and then. And that so you will understand that the, the the planning for that player it's it's not important it's super important but at the same time um, has to be uh, managed and of course the the performance planning as we say before uh, you know when I, when I plan the, the 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 competition and my performance I have really really to be to be ready for that particular competition, either can be the, the, the once again, the national team, the, from one point of view, the club, uh, the, the, the individual tournaments and so on. So you are the, the coach and you are responsible and you have to, to take, care, uh, uh, take care about that. Uh, going quickly on the training, uh, which we have, uh, you know, um, also for this, we, we are very familiar. I, I just put the definition, you know, make it full. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a sort of, a, uh, you know, whatever you do in the, in the, in the, in the training, whether it's a session, whether it's a, it's, a, it's a rally, whether it's a ball, whatever, has to be full. So I listed a little bit some of them and uh, I hope you like it. <laughs> so successful uh, session, thoughtful session, uh, resourceful uh, rally. Uh, I just uh, you can read some of them. Uh, powerful ball, wonderful ball. Because of players, also they they love to to have some uh, exceptional uh, performance during the the training and making some really really unbelievable, unexpected, uh, unexpected, and uh, uh, at the end uh, uh, wonderful. So. Um, preparatory uh, routine. Uh, let's go a little bit in a sort of um, uh, daily. What might be, you know, the, the work for the for the um, for the player. We have a preparatory routine, and uh, and we keep the multi balls and the, our, you know, main structure. Uh, what we have. So stuff. Stuff is is a, is is a, is a group of uh, of the people working with you with the coach. And of course, with the player, we will go later on one by one. But I want to just uh, insist uh, how important is this uh, this element. It actually is, is a group of uh, of uh, of people. Cooperation extremely important for the success of the player to have uh, the cooperation of the other coaches, other player, uh, talking with them uh, and having the same, sometimes the same, uh, you know, uh, um, feeling and uh, perspective and uh, objective also. So um, uh, then we have uh, the maintenance, let's call maintenance, is, uh, is uh, something that uh, uh, if you think a player, if you think a player of that level, that comes from what we have done last week, remember, and what we have done two weeks ago and three weeks ago. Uh, this it's not more that they have to learn something new in terms of uh, footwork. It's something to maintain. Something, of course, that sometimes there are small details uh, can make a, a big, uh, big change in the in the performance of a strokes uh, of uh, of a uh, performance of, uh, of, uh, of uh, overall a match. Uh, uh, but uh, the footwork is something that it goes in a sort of uh, uh, regular routine. Either can be uh, sideways or uh, stepping around, uh, cross legs. Uh, actually, you go to mix up more. But uh, everything is it's coming, you know, to maintain that uh, that uh, uh, that status. Uh, your drills, of course. Uh, I was a player, and uh, I remember very well. If you, if you, if you, if you are a player, I mean, if you have played a little bit, there are some uh, some mechanism. Let let's call it like that that uh, makes you, uh, let's say, uh, not 
happy, let's say happy, you know, or a, or a confident. That confidence is something that is going throughout the, the everything. Uh, that you repeat the same it can be maybe two to the back end, two to the forehand. I'm sorry, I don't have a table here. Okay, I actually have a table, but there's no table tennis table uh, where uh, I, I can show you and understand. This one is uh, is just a theoretic lessons, uh, but I hope you understand what I'm what I'm telling. Uh, where you know the ball coming in a pre-defined, uh, pre-arranged drills, uh, and then uh, you feel ah, okay, I can do it. I can do it. This is something that makes me cool, makes me confident, makes me uh, very uh, relaxed, uh, and I know that in that moment I have to be to be relaxed. Um, this is coming, you know, to have in a sort of a comfort zone. We will see later on to how to not uh, not be only in the comfort zone. Uh, give a free hand. So also players at that level, they have their own feeling, you know. So it's important that uh, there is a time for them to also to think, uh, uh, okay, take your 10 minutes, uh, go on your own. Uh, you decide uh, your partners is, uh, is, uh, is ready to, to, uh, to apply what, uh, what you want, uh, what kind of ball they have to give you and so on. So uh, giving free hand means, uh, you know, to let the player taking initiative because when they are, the, they are the performers. So they have to take initiative. We cannot expect that we 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 lead them from ball number one to the to the last ball. So they have to take initiative. They have to think in in a certain way. So it's important that also during the the regular routine, preparatory routine, they have some time for them themselves. Open-minded, of course, when we do the the, the this work. We have to keep them uh, very uh, ready, you know, to respond uh, to different uh, uh, situation and uh, having the proper abilities to to handle them. And then at the end, to uh, to have uh, an assessment, uh, an assessment uh, um, process. The next, uh, the next uh, part is the is the multiples. Also, this one we have discussed several times about that. And uh, uh, yes, at this stage, uh, we can consider essential. If any of you um, was in a, in, a, in, a, in a top competition, I, I remember very well uh, last, uh, last World Championships uh, where the two players were, were doing the training before playing the final or maybe semi-final. They were there with the coach, with the training partners, and they were there to try and doing multi, multi balls because uh, we will see how multi balls can be effective, very effective actually. So essential and confidence, they go together. Again, confidence coming again and again. Uh, what uh, what we can do with the multiples in that uh, in that moment uh, can be uh, specific, targeting something in particular uh, of your uh, of your game, or maybe on uh, the opponent's uh, opponent's game, and and the so on a short ball or a flick. Uh, you keep repeating, repeating. Maybe you add one flick and one uh, uh, speed back, and anything you can do according to what the player need in that time so targeting is uh, it's uh, extremely important feeling it's uh, the, the fine touch you know so in that moment in the few moments before the competition they have to have that feeling so uh, again this is feeling and confidence they go they go together so it's uh, it's important that they we can create the, the situation can be short return making the ball two bounces on the opponent's hand or maybe three bounces you know having the feeling that i can control the ball the ball is in my control and uh, and the uh, implementation so uh, there are a situation where uh, uh, that happened in, in personally in my personal experience where you are there you have to find something something different something why don't we try this you know we try this and then with your help uh, with the help of the multi balls uh, uh, with the confidence that you can generate uh, so it's a sort of a trigger you know to make the the player confident to to do even something new something different something unexpected just during the uh, uh, before the, the 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 performance so 
uh, this is something that you you can consider. Uh, yes, this is another part to get stressed. Uh, if before was a comfort zone, now we can have also uh, to to get uh, stressed to to put the players under pressure, and we will see how important it is uh, to get the player with the right pressure before uh, before the before the performance, and uh, everything you know to give. Uh, to give the, the player the, the feeling to be unbeatable. We know that determination and the will to succeed uh, are important to be added in all overall uh, abilities and skills, uh, either technical skills, tactical skills. So remember, a lot of players there are that only with determination just to feel I'm strong, I'm good, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, God, I can, I can perform much better than my capabilities. So uh, we have to consider, we have to consider this. Competition, competition is, uh, uh, of course, uh, it's not let's go for uh, this group of competition and let's see at the very end how coming, of course, at the, at the young age, we want to perform uh, uh, well. We want to win and we want to show our abilities and get a place in the international scene. Now we are already there. So each competition should be, uh, should be targeted and each match should be, should be targeted. So that's why we call, uh, we call it mental sport because at that level, every single situation is mental. We don't have, a, there is no room to, to, to relax. Uh, well, that's changed when we change the score from 21 to 11. That time was a different kind of mental sport, uh, different kind of pressure. Five serves in a row, this time 11 points, two serves in a row where uh, you know you have to capitalize uh, your uh, your uh, your uh, skills and uh, make as many points as possible and then reach uh, the 11th uh, 11th point um yeah as usual i i, I list a little bit a uh, few things to get used to it uh, you know win you have the two areas domestic and international domestic you can have uh, a certain outcome uh, high, very high expectation, you are the boss over there. International, you get in an area where you are one of the bosses. So there are many others over there. So it's, it's not the same. So things are totally different. Working with staff, your performance can draw attention, of course. So you can be, we said the other, the other time, you know, the, the role model uh, you, you can be. Uh, you have to manage yourself. Uh, actually, let me go one minute, uh, one minute back to the last uh, last uh, week uh, when I was I was telling you what what the player is is becoming. You, you remember maybe. So a player is also a media star. I don't know if you recall that, but is uh, a media star. Can you can you just think about uh, Twitter, uh, Facebook? Uh, uh, TikTok, uh, um, uh, YouTube, uh, interview there, interview here, and then Facebook, put the post, uh, uh, reply to that thing. Uh, so they are in the, in, 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 in the middle of a very, very strong interest, uh, and either is domestic or international. So this is a part that uh, maybe we can have, uh, Dominic, we can have uh, one, uh, one class uh, on this, uh, maybe calling one expert on this uh, topic, because uh, for me it's quite important. Uh, and then uh, be professional, always, always be professional. I, uh, I added a few more things uh, on, the, on this part. I call performance uh, fact. And uh, uh, where F is uh, find the uh, criticality, uh, accept uh, the outcome positively, uh, consider your mistake and the opponent's abilities. Always try to have this balance, remember, you know. So it's not that if you lose, it's always your fault, you know. It's, it's also uh, uh, the ability of the player. So recognizing the ability of your opponents, uh, strengthening, yourself, 
You know, it's because we have to keep our confidence high. We cannot just go out the court and say, ah, it's my fault. Uh, I should have done this. I should have done that. Uh, uh, why I played that back and I should have played the four. And then, then maybe the opponents did something great, you know. So it's, it's uh, we have just to consider, at least to consider. That's why I put, <laughs> I put C. Treasure any experience. I think even you ask a player like uh, like uh, uh, Vladimir Samsonov uh, with the unbelievable great career, Timo Boll. The other day we were talking with uh, Timo Boll about this. Uh, he always uh, uh, he they have the same attitude. You know, so I want to understand. I want to learn. I want to. Uh, uh, to 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 make it uh, uh, um, that experience uh, helpful for my next uh, next uh, competition, and uh, and so on. So uh, I would say that, that uh, time is on your side, you know. So you have to count on this because uh, uh, through time you can uh, you can uh, you can learn. So where I'm heading, uh, maturity is the key. Of course, we are getting a lot of uh, experience, competition, learning, uh, feedback uh, from coaches, uh, from players, from your own, and so on. So we are going to be mature and mature and mature, and this is the your uh, your best uh, uh, skill that overall you can apply in all uh, in all other uh, other skills. Um, I'm concluding uh, presenting this and then I leave the floor to Dominic. Uh, as usual, again, we have the, the high performance, the four pillars, the fitness. Uh, this time I have had the, the, this stuff. We'll see how important is the stuff. Uh, sports psychology, well, is a mental sport. Now it comes really, really, very, very important. And then we have this... Uh, Testa, testa. Okay, actually, testa in Italian means mind, means brain, means uh, head. It's something that's supervising everything. We will see what is the acronym. Acronym means. So I uh, I stop here for now, and um, Mr. Plotner, Dominic, uh, the floor is yours. Thank you very much for now. Thank you very much, Massimo for this great part of our fourth lesson. And uh, I would uh, like to address today the, the following topics related to fitness. It will be the role of the sport science, the periodization part two, the supercompensation, the adaptational changes, and last but not least, the fatigue and recovery. So as Massimo mentioned before, it's, it's time for high performance, uh, time to reach the excellence. Um, first of all, as discussed in the previous lessons, sports training in general uh, is systematic and regular. That means it should be continuous without disruptions. Athletes should train on a daily basis and uh, only the volume and the methods of the training should change. You have to be aware that any longer disruption in the training uh, might put the sport development in risk. Furthermore, the, the sports training is planned and programmed. This fact enables us to avoid almost all coincidences. The coach has to be aware uh, what the current athlete's state is and what they want to accomplish in order to, to determine uh, the procedures which lead to the achievement of the goals. Let's start with the role of the sports science. And actually, it's, it has a very great or it has great benefits because the psychophysical reactions can be better understood. So uh, thanks to the sports science, as I mentioned, now the related to the psychophysical reactions, thanks to them, we do understand them uh, much better. And the training adaptation uh, can be much better understood understood uh, than 10 or 20 years ago. Um, it is the regular task and, and, um, and challenge also, I can say, to, to analyze uh, the current principles of the training theory and to adjust them to the needs of sport nowadays and of course also to the new technologies. Uh, on the left picture, you can, you can see a lactate step test 
And on the right one, a biomechanical analysis, uh, which is uh, the investigation, uh, how, how the technique uh, and the quality uh, changes under fatigue when performing a forehand topspin stroke. So very interesting topics, what the sport science cover. And uh, today it is possible to develop certain models of the training for different sports and also athletes of different ages and quality that are based on the newest scientific um, information related to the loads and methods of the sport preparation. And uh, now we are uh, going over to the periodization part two. And uh, I would like to talk shortly about the periodization models in sport. Uh, we do have uh, three types of periodization models. The first one is the linear model, which you can see uh, on the left side on the top. This is a classical approach where the intensity and the volume, they remain consistent through the entire mesocycle. This uh, is especially recommendable if you are training one target after another, and especially done in specific requirement sports. Uh, the second one is the nonlinear or undulating model. Uh, it's a, a right approach where intensity and the volume fluctuate throughout the subface. So this is more for the multiple requirement sports and often used for the more advanced training uh, trained athletes, I can say, and for longer sports seasons. And uh, the third one is the block periodization type, as you can see uh, fully down on the left side. Uh, it is a training cycle uh, of the minimum number of highly concentrated specialized workloads lasting for two to four weeks. Uh, but what is it more in detail? Uh, the concept of the block periodization focuses on breaking down the specific uh, training periods, in, as I mentioned, in, into two to four weeks. And uh, each block encompasses uh, three different stages. The first one is the accumulation phase. This is uh, reaching from 50 to 75 percent of the intensity. Then the second one is the transmutation reaching from 75 to 90 percent of the intensity. And the last one is the realization phase, which uh, is above 90 percent of the intensity. The goal behind these uh, smaller specific blocks is to allow the athlete to remain uh, the peak level for a longer time. So especially sports like table tennis, which really have, I can say, multiple, uh, you know, like uh, peaks within a year. And uh, within the training seasons, athletes will only focus on, on, on adaptations they need specifically for their sport. So this is a big advantage for table tennis. And if athletes, for example, they do not need so much of the uh, aerobic, I mean, the general endurance practice, of course, they, then they don't, they will not spend such a, you know, huge amount of time with it. Besides the fact that it is a really great tool, uh, it's very, it's also a very effective uh, method to avoid burning out. And uh, this leads us also now to the periodization periods. And we do differ between the preparational period, the competition period, the transition period and the active rest period. And I would uh, also like to say how efficient or also to emphasize how efficient it can be. So a periodized approach elicits a greater strength changes and also motor performance improvement. So uh, in the last lesson, we've touched the topic periodization already, and we addressed that the well-designed plan is, is the base for it. So uh, first of all, the, it has to be has to have precisely defined goals. The second point is the plan has to <clears throat> has to be, uh, you know, to content all the important elements and they have to fit together. The third point is a good structural layout. The fourth point is the possibility of the adjustment and the last one, the economy. So we must take into account a number of, of factors when we are planning our fitness programs. It's also the individual strengths and weaknesses, the dates for the competitions, the rate of the progressive overload, the fitness components necessary for the performance, and the fact that the high level of fitness cannot be maintained throughout the whole year. So let's start to talk about the preparational uh, phase. Uh, later on, uh, dear ladies and gentlemen, our PowerPoint presentation will be as usual uploaded on our ITTFeducation.com page. 
And then you can have uh, more time, take your time and have also a closer look at our example plans for each of the phases I'm going to talk about. So when talking about the preparational phase, it's easily said a foundation for the athlete. Uh, so in general, it it is a has it contains a high volume and a low intensity. And the goal, as I mentioned, is to prepare the athlete for more intense sport specific training later on. While the specific period, the, the pre-season period or sport specific training period, it's more about the anaerobic training, the ABCs, the, the power and flexibility. So let's have a closer look on the general preparational phase um, where 70 or 80 percent of the time spent on developing aerobic endurance is put on. So also for strength sport, uh, objective is the strength development. For the team sports, only very basic technical and tactical skills are practiced and no competitions. It generally lasts from six to 16 weeks. And throughout the preparational period, we do differ between the different strength phases. The first one is the hypertrophy phase. It contains a high volume and low intensity and lasts up to six weeks. And uh, it establishes the neural and muscular base. So adaptations occur within the body. The second phase is the strength phase. It's, about, it's more about the moderate volume. More, more complex uh, lifts are done first. The multiple joint uh, movements are, you know, uh, prioritized. Uh, I mean, uh, you know, like they are put before the single joint movements and the agility and the flexibility progression is also there. Um, so furthermore, the speed development is very important within the strength phase. So the recovery times between the sets is based on the energy systems ratio. And uh, the last phase is the power phase. So a low volume with a very high intensity. The, and the full recovery between the sets is needed. So that uh, thinking about the energy system ratios, the high intensity aerobic activities and the plyometrics power moves. And it also contains the agility and flexibility progression. The goal is to peak the, you know, right before the competition begins. Going over, this leads us to the competition phase. The competition, uh, <clears throat> the competitive phase uh, is, you know, divided into the pre-competition phase. So this is more the early season games. Competitions, they don't have like, uh, which don't have the primary focus, you know, and then we do have the main competition, the mayor games or, or championship events. So when thinking about the competitive period, uh, then we have to say during the season, it usually lasts between three to six months. So we must take into account uh, the demands of the sport and also, of course, uh, must ensure in sufficient time for recovery between the competition. Peaking for the competition on a weekly and seasonal basis must also be considered, especially within table tennis. And the goal is to maintain and also improve the level of, you know, conditioning. So the strength and power workout loads uh, should be done and should, I mean, the practice should be done at least once per week. Often it includes also a pre-competition phase for a new weeks and a new tapering phase 10 days before the final competition. So to, to build up again the new peak level. And then uh, when talking about uh, the, the most important phase, the main competitive phase, uh, the weekly training should reach maximum intensity two to four times per week. So the, the stress level should be varied. So hard day should be followed by an easy day. And the competition should be ideally built in order of importance and difficulty. Then we do have the normal competitive phase where the conditioning uh, must be maintained. So 90% of the training is sport specific, but the other 10% you have to work on maintaining your conditional uh, state. The technical and the te technical um, and psychological training increases. And uh, yeah, this is uh, also, of course, on the other hand, while they increase, the volume decreases. So this can last from two to nine months. And the tapering phase, um, you know, this is, uh, as mentioned before, normally all the time a quite short phase before we want to reach the peak level. 
Um, it should proceed the final competition by one to two weeks. The volume and intensity, they are reduced. Not more than two intensive uh, training periods within the week should be applied. And in the second week of the two weeks, uh, the strength program should be almost stopped or fully stopped. And uh, when thinking about the competition, then we also have to think about the different cycles. And we, we differ between three uh, types of the cycle. The first one is the monocycle, and it contains one preparational phase, one general phase, the specific phase, and one main competitive phase, where also the tapering phase before the competition is included. Then on the second uh, on the, se the second point is the bi cycle. So two monocycles, they are linked together. It contains a preparation of phase one, a competitive phase one, the transition phase, which lasts for one week. Then again, preparation of phase two, competitive phase two, and transition phase two. And last but not least, we do have the tri cycle, uh, three main competitions within one year. So the long preparation of phase one, Competitive phase one, short transition phase one, then preparation phase two, competitive phase two, transition phase two, and then the last one, the last cycle, preparation phase three, competitive phase three, and the transition phase three. And this leads us then to the transition and the active rest. And this usually lasts, especially within the table tennis uh, business, three to four weeks a year. So the first week is more the evaluation of the current state of the athlete. Then, uh, of course, you have to continue to, to exercise at a low intensity. And uh, the athletes recuperate from a long competitive period uh, and uh, maintain a general level of fitness. And uh, when talking about the, the, um, the restoration, this means, uh, of course, they remain physically active. This lasts from one to four weeks, as mentioned, and it's a mental and physical break from sport. And a further increase in the training and competition loads may be expected in the future. Uh, so athletes will be able to, to tolerate those loads due to the following uh, reasons. To modern diagnostic procedures, as mentioned before, to the improved recovery methods, which I will uh, talk later on, the supplementary uh, stimulation of the athletes and uh, improved preparation conditions, of course. And a highly coordinated and professional team approach is required to prevent the overtraining. Which uh, leads us to the next slide. Here you can see um, Madveev's model of the periodization. And in the last lesson, we showed you the model for the newcomers. And this time, uh, we show you the model for the advanced athletes. Uh, the volume and intensity are wave-like, just the technique increases a lot throughout the time uh, till the start of the active rest. And uh, going over to the microcycle types within, uh, within the periodization, we do differ between three types. It's the first one is the ordinary or normal microcycle type, which you can see at the top on the left. It is ca characterized by the classic distribution of training sessions with a higher or lower load. Training session with medium and sub-medium, uh, sub-maximum loads uh, prevail. It's the focus uh, for to the focus is on you know like uh, readiness of the maintenance. You know, so then the second one is the shock microcycle. It's characterized by the by a large number of training days and uh, training units with high and maximum loads. And the proportion of these training sessions is more than 50%, as you can see in the middle. And then we do have uh, the relaxation or recovery microcycle. It comprises a, a large number of training days and training units with low or moderate loads. And it's all the time better to over plan than to under plan. It is easier to, you have to be aware, it's easier to remove the drills or change the drill plan than to add unplanned drills. And related to the progression, the plan, uh, so it has to be planned so that the activities uh, flow from one to the next one smoothly. Uh, you have to have the equipment uh, close at the hand and also develop routines so that the participants, they know what to do next to save time. But bear in mind, 
not too many goals in one training. And uh, also when talking about the training, there are the different uh, reactions uh, of the body to the different loads. As you can see here in the, on the picture, the different loads, they, they cause different reactions of, of the athlete's organism. Uh, uh, the maximal loads enable the athlete uh, to raise the level uh, more, while minimum loads on the other side uh, don't really change the level. And this slide leads us up to the next point, which is one of the most important points uh, within the uh, fitness, the super compensation. And what is the super compensation? It's uh, actually it's uh, the biological phenomenon of the advancement in the trained capacity following the application of the appropriate training workload and adequate recovery. The imbalance in the homeostasis uh, that has been induced requires the organism to reorganize its functional mechanisms in order to re-establish the previous state of the homeostasis. In addition, the organism adapts uh, to the stressors such that uh, if the same stressor were imposed again, it would not be displaced to the same extent again. So this process is referred to the supercompensation and in essence, it is how training works. And here you can see on the picture, um, wh when you are doing the exercise, then a deterioration occurs. And when this deterioration occurs, of course, the, the level of the, of the capacity drops. Then you start the recovery. Slowly but surely, the subcompensation occurs. Then the compensation occurs. And uh, when before doing the next practice, the supercompensation occurs. While then, when you start the next one, the super compensation is the last one which occurs. So this is, bear in mind that this is one of the most important models in sport, in the sport fitness sector. And this leads us to the next one. This is the, or are the adaptational changes. Uh, adaptation is a characteristic of every living organism, I have to say. So an athlete's condition is there by influence by training stimuli. Uh, it actually represents the changes specific to the different demands of each sport. So the training, of course, uh, the training load must be over the threshold. It is necessary to provoke uh, very large but controlled ph physiological reactions. And when talking about the progressive overload, then we have to think about the following thing. Training is designed to progressively overload the body system and fuel stores. If the training stress is inadequate, to overload the physical systems, then no adaptations will occur. And if the workload is too great applied to maybe to do it too quickly or, you know, it's performed too often without adequate rest, then the fatigue follows and the following performance will be reduced, even reduced. So uh, work alone is not enough to produce the result. Um, your body needs time to adapt to the training. Uh, and to encourage adaptation to the training, it is important to plan the recovery uh, activities that reduce the residual fatigue. The sooner you uh, recover from uh, the fatigue and the fresher you are, when you complete a training session, the better the change of improvement is. And uh, this leads us to the last point uh, when talking about the fitness, it's the fatigue and the recovery. Uh, actually, I have to say fatigue is really a very important concern for all the athletes, the sport. It's your body of uh, communicating that you need to ease up um, on the intensity of your physical activity. And Dr. Wim said uh, one time and explained it in a journal review in sports medicine that fatigue helps you to prevent from performing exercise at an intensity and duration that could harm your body. So while uh, high intensity or long duration sport always eventually lead to fatigue, you, you can help prevent it with proper conditioning and of course also fueling. If we uh, present a recovery method uh, at the point of fatigue, we can expect to reduce the, the amount of the time it will take for the athlete to recover from the training. Uh, fatigue is multifactorially, I have to say, depending on the type of the training stimulus. An athlete can experience a number of, of different forms of fatigue. Before we can introduce 
a recovery strategy, we need to know what type of fatigue we are dealing with. So we do differ between the central fatigue, uh, the, it's, you know, in the central nervous system, or also the central location of the fatigue, or the peripheral fatigue, uh, fatigue occurring within the, it's a fatigue occurring within the, the local motor unit, it's a local fatigue. And the muscle action potentials were relatively unaffected. And uh, yeah, it, as I told you, it's the peripheral location of the fatigue. And it's also about the neurological, uh, the peripheral nervous system, the, which, which, uh, which can be, you know, caused by high intensity work, resistance training, strength and power development, the speed work, and the skill sessions and introduction of new training techniques. And related to the, to the time issue, we do differ between three different types of fatigue. The local fatigue, which is localized related to a specific activity. The general fatigue can be physical and mental related to the whole training session. And uh, the third one, is the long-term or the chronic fatigue relate? It's related to the uh, physiological and psychological stress caused by exhaustion and overtraining. You know, it feels like being tired, and you will notice a deterioration in the performance too. There is always a very thin line, I can say, between being a world champion athlete and also a run athlete. The quick question is how how you can push yourself to the limits. Um, of human performance without tipping over this edge, you know. So there is um, there is one answer I can say. One of the simplest yet most neglected training principles. It's called recovery, and uh, we do have to differ between the um, terms recovery and regeneration. Reco recovery is the gradual healing through rest after sickness or injury, and the regeneration is the growth of a new or lost tissue or destroyed parts of the um, organs so that the original function is restored. An enhanced volume of the work, especially a high intensity of workloads in training and competitions, require adequate recovery during the rest time, as I mentioned before. And uh, the recovery implies the application of diverse procedures that can enable the, the, the quick regeneration of athletes and the re-establishment uh, of the homeostasis which uh, the previous exertion has disturbed. So simultaneously with the development of the training methods, recovery methods have also been developed. By the application of these methods, uh, you know, one can prevent the onset of the overload and the overtraining. And um, actually I can say, you know, the, the normalization of the, of the biological functions in an athlete's organism or the, also the normalization of the homeostatic balance can be realized within several minutes, really several hours. It's almost a quick recovery. But, um, you know, the reconstruction effects uh, related um, uh, to the cell structure and the en enzymic systems uh, are realized over a longer period of time, so up to 72 hours after the workout. And uh, we do have different uh, types of uh, recovery methods. Uh, we can have, first of all, the massage, sauna, hydrotherapy, so hydrotherapy baths, the application of the warmth, cryotherapy, application of the cold, other procedures, of course. Then we do have the compression closing and also a very well-known method, the black rolling. And now that's all from my side for the fitness part, and I would like to pass over to you, Massimo, again for the next part. Yeah, <clears throat> thank you very much, uh, Dominic. Uh, uh, yeah, well, a lot of things uh, were there. And uh, sorry, it must have been uh, some interruption of the, uh, of the presentation. Uh, something uh, stopped uh, suddenly. So uh, we're sorry for, uh, for this. I have, uh, we have uh, restored the presentation as uh, it was uh, uh, with the Dominic uh, topic. And uh, we can continue on uh, on today. So yeah, uh, well, um, <laughs> after after talking and seeing so many things that uh, uh, I, I I can I can say I'm not alone, you know. So the the player is the hub. It's it's there and uh, everything rotating around around him. And uh, if you are the coach of this player, 
you have to be the, you know, how to say, the, the ground control. <laughs> so the player is the hub and you are the ground control. So, so you supervise, uh, supervise everything. So to do this, uh, um, we have to work in team. We have to work in team and uh, uh, you need the uh, uh, expert stuff. I have listed the, the ideal, ideal, let's say, uh, group of persons that start with the training partners, uh, the doctor, of course, uh, physio, massage therapist, mental trainer, fitness trainer, nutritionist, and the, the trip planner. So uh, we will go one by one, but before I want just to give you an overview about, uh, you know, the roles uh, of the of the people should work uh, with you as a head coach uh, where you have the control of everything and uh, each of the of the staff uh, uh, should be uh, should be focused on the area uh, where uh, they have the expertise of course you know so the nutritionist for the for the uh, meal planning uh, whether you are in a training or you are in a, in a competition maybe you have two matches in a row so we will see later on so this is just to give you a, a, a quick idea um, and let's go one by one just really really quickly uh, the training partners, I, I put on the left side, you know, uh, how to be a pro, you know. So uh, as a pro, I need them. You coach, you need them. And they can make the difference, actually. Uh, so who are they? So there, are, there, are, there can be a player or a group of players, uh, left-hander, right-hander, pen-holders, uh, uh, with the different maybe skills uh, and, uh, and uh, abilities where, you know, in, uh, in uh, preparing the, the, the player can, uh, uh, can be uh, a very uh, um, important, uh, important uh, tile of, uh, of, the, of the entire, entire picture. Uh, so uh, they are important, they can be with you all the time. Uh, during the competition, uh, many countries actually they have the the, the training partners with the, within the team. So okay, we go for the always the extreme example. You know, if you go in uh, with the national team, uh, the Chinese national team, the the national team is made by 20, 24 players, but only five at the end uh, will uh, will be in the in the team in the in the world uh, world championships or or even now only three in the olympics uh, uh, but all the other they work exactly uh, like uh, the top players and they have to keep up actually their level as we were saying before you know so it's not your 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 performance is the is the performance also of your uh, of your uh, teammates in this case a training partner as well we, we don't want people just, uh, you know, uh, getting, uh, you know, annoying there, and, but they have to be active. They have to understand what uh, what's going on during your uh, your preparation. Uh, the doctor, the doctor, it's it can happen, you know, uh, to be efficient, effective. So the sport medicine specialization is uh, uh, is extremely important for the professional player. Uh, and uh, he, he, he can, uh, of course, advise uh, you on many things in case of injury, uh, how to prevent uh, injuries. Uh, well, one important thing that I, di I, don't, I didn't mention here is the, is the doping. So the doping is, uh, is, is something that really the doctor can prescribe you the, the, the proper drugs uh, in, if you have, uh, I don't know, uh, um, you, you, you got cold or any other, any other problem not related to the, uh, to the activity. Uh, but, uh, uh, you know, but sometimes if you want to go on your own, maybe you go to the, to the drugstore and then you go for a, a, simple, uh, a simple medicine that can contain some, uh, some uh, substance, prohibited substance. So doctor is very important also to be aware about, uh, about this, uh, uh, this point. Um, a physio. A physio is the mechanic. Let's call it like that. You know, I, I like to play a little bit. Just please forgive me. <laughs> it's the mechanic, you know, taking care. All they take care, take care about the, of the player. But uh, uh, the, the body machine has to be, you know, um, fit. And uh, if something wrong in the in the in the in the joint and bones, uh, uh, ligaments. Uh, 
uh, they can be very effective, you know, to make uh, make uh, taping or uh, or doing a proper uh, action on your uh, uh, on your joint or maybe using some uh, tools. Uh, um, I don't know uh, some uh, electronic uh, stuff. They are there many things uh, available for the physio in order to make you recover uh, very very <clears throat> very quickly. Massage therapist, this is not only massage therapist, uh, I, I said this more than that. Normally, he's a good friend. Uh, the, a massage therapist is a good friend. <laughs> he's with you, you know, in a, in a warm-up time, uh, during the, the, the training, during the performance, uh, and then at the end, uh, uh, making your, uh, your muscles uh, uh, relax. Uh, he's there all the time. Just even a few, few seconds before the, the competition starts, they are, there, they are there with you. And then as a player, as a coach, we, we have a very, very strong, uh, very strong connection with, uh, with, uh, with uh, her or, uh, or him. Uh, the mental trainer, uh, mental sport, we have said many times, uh, and uh, think better, think different. So uh, a, a good preparation in order to, uh, to be uh, mental fit, but let's say um, uh, specifically mental fit for that match, uh, for that particular uh, commitment uh, uh, to, you know, where you have to where you have to perform. So uh, the mental trainer is very important. It's not easy to find. I have to say it's not easy to find because uh, a mental trainer is not just a doctor, uh, a specialist, an ex expert on the, this matter because he has also, he or she has to know the matter. It's not just the brain. It's not just how we think, you know, but how we think in table tennis. How we think when we are there, 9-9, nine, nine, and then if you don't feel it, if you don't know actually, ah, this is a process that, uh, you know, we have to uh, understand. Um, when I was uh, at coaching in several parts, I, 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 I had some uh, stuff like mental, mental trainer, and then uh, uh, maybe they, they start uh, saying, uh, okay, we have to change the personality of the player. We have to change. What? 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 I said, stop it. <laughs> we don't have to change the personality. We have to make the, the player, you know, ready to, uh, to perform uh, under uh, uh, certain pressure where maybe he or she facing the, the, same, uh, the same problem in certain, in, in a particular situation. So, it's not easy to, to find. So as a head coach, as a coach, uh, uh, please uh, mm, um, pay, uh, pay attention on, uh, <clears throat> on this. Uh, the fitness trainer, uh, this is, is instrumental. As uh, you know, Dominic uh, explained many things uh, regarding the, the fitness. Uh, this, this guy or this, this person, uh, it's, it's really important to make your, uh, uh, your body fit, ready, uh, recovering, uh, flexible, responsive, uh, and uh, is really instrumental for your performance uh, before uh, and uh, after, you know, in order to, to have a proper cool down, stretching and so on. So this, uh, this, uh, this uh, person is extremely important. Uh, nutritionist, I, I put the underestimated. Because maybe we don't think enough about about this. We 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 go to the competition. We have maybe three four matches uh, uh, during the day. We don't know when to when to eat, how to eat. Uh, sometimes we go for some random food. Uh, we don't know. We have to take care of it. We have to pay attention. Our performance is not. It's it's not uh, ex exempt from uh, from what we eat. Uh, uh, or how we sleep, actually, you know. So uh, the, the, the nutritionist is very important that can can also advise you uh, what kind of food, whether it's more fruit or more carbohydrates, uh, uh, how to recover more proteins, uh, uh, what kind of supplement maybe to to have uh, uh, a banana during the <laughs> during the match. So many players, you know, having a banana in uh, in uh, in between the the games. Um, um, so it's uh, well. Let's think about uh, 
about this figure that we don't uh, we don't think uh, enough. Uh, a trip planner, a trip planner nowadays with such uh, uh, this volume of activities, uh, uh, we we sometimes uh, we let the player or sometimes we do this job, you know, as a coach. Or sometimes it's the player uh, itself that uh, uh, going on the on the website uh, or maybe having uh, a travel uh, agent uh, friend and uh, okay can you plan this trip to Asia then going back to Europe okay having two three days there then because I have to go to India and then again it is our life at that stage is a continuous continuous uh, um, uh, and, uh, and life in motion, let's say. In between, we have to put, uh, Dominic said, the, the preparation. We have to put the, 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 all the aspect to prepare the players. You see how complicated is this? So it's our job. As a coach, it's not that easy. But I want that with this, you, you guys, you, you, you go back. I don't know with your, uh, with your play, with your kids, uh, with a lot of motivation and going tomorrow. Okay, let's plan properly what to do in order to, you know, to go to the next level. This is what I want to, uh, you know, to uh, achieve. Um, regarding the stuff, okay, there is more. I know, I know what you think. Maybe you already sent some messages. There is more. I will, uh, I will uh, talk later on when we have the the testa. You remember the testa uh, chapter? So I will uh, pass again uh, to uh, Dominic for the spot psychology. Back to you, Dominic. Thank you very much, Massimo. And as Massimo mentioned, over to the sport psychology. And uh, we have to, to be aware that there is always, uh, you know, a relation between the, the physical and the mental engagement in sports training. So the more complex, uh, you know, uh, motor tasks increase and athletes mental abilities activation. Uh, it is also a very, the sport psychology is a very important part of the, of the interdisciplinary approach. And uh, I want to address today the following topics. Dealing with pressure, the individual zone of the optimal functioning, the psychological fatigue, and the progressive muscle relaxation and meditation. And uh, let's start with uh, dealing uh, with pressure. And uh, especially for on the high elite level, I can say, uh, some people do think uh, that the reality all the time uh, looks so nice and, and everything goes smooth. But how does the reality and the, the daily business of them, of the of most of the top athletes really do look like? So uh, in many cases, of course, they are very successful in, in their countries. So they are so-called national heroes. They do win a lot within their countries, almost all matches. So they are used to, to be successful and uh, to be on the on the winner side i can say but they do have to face of course setbacks on, on the international level on their way to the top 20 so uh, when when thinking about the world uh, tour tournaments of course not all of the players are are able to 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 enter the the round of 16 or 8 or even some of them for some of them it's difficult to to you know go through the a preliminary uh, phase. So this we have to consider. And um, the third point, of course, uh, it's very high demanding. And I see there is a mistake. Sorry for the S. It's very high demanding for them. So they, they for sure, for a lot of them, there is a lot of pressure on their shoulders, last on their shoulders. And um, as Martin mentioned before, it's also about the staff issue. Unfortunately, not all of the players worldwide, they do have a complete staff. So the, the players which do have, for sure they have a big advantage. But nevertheless, we have, have to face this challenge. You know, the, the athletes have and the coaches have to face this challenge and try to improvise and also, you know, try to, to overtake the part of maybe, you know, the coach has to overtake the part of the sport psychologist in, in, in some, some cases. I mean, it's not, not uh, ideal, but has to be done in a way you know and uh, bear in mind there is there are just a few exceptions which are to a certain extent successful throughout their whole sports career 
Um, then going over to the individual zone of the optimal functioning. And this is uh, the most popular account uh, for the relationship between the Arusha and performance. Uh, and I have to say that we as the coaches have to find a way uh, how to lead the athlete in the individual zone of the optimal function or how to find it, even find it, you know. So um, it proposes that there are, you know, individual differences in the way people react to anxiety. So some tend to succeed when the anxiety is low, while others tend to succeed when the anxiety is high. So as we can see, anxiety can be beneficial. Therefore, each person, you know, has to has to have his her own preferred level of anxiety that allows them to perform at their optimum. When the athletes are in the optimal uh, performance zone, that means that they are in their preferred level of anxiety, actually. If an athlete experiences too much or too little anxiety, that, that can hinder his performance even, you know. So the athlete is out of the optimal zone, we can say. And now, as I mentioned before, it's time to find the optimal combination of the useful emotions to, to be or to get into the individual zone of optimal functioning. In addition to the anxiety, um, you know, it's, uh, it's about uh, a description of a variety of the emotional stage, which could be either helpful or also so-called optimal or unhelpful and dysfunctional. For example, some athletes, they may notice that the feeling uh, being excited is not conductive to performing well, you know, while others would uh, say that the feeling uh, to be angry helps them to reach the optimal performance state. Thus, the individual zone of the optimal functioning uh, model suggests that each athlete uh, could find out his her optimal combination of useful emotions and learn how to reach this unique, I can say, state prior to the competition. But the main uh, criticism of the individual uh, zones of optimal functioning uh, is that it doesn't explain why some people, you know, perform better when, when certain emotional states uh, occur. And on the other hand, they maybe some do not occur. So they are not sure, still not sure. But uh, the individual zone of the optimal function, nevertheless, is a useful model that helps us or helps the athlete to improve the self-awareness and the psychological readiness. A common way to find out the individual optimal performance zone uh, is, is, you know, uh, this, to find out the state is to, to you know, uh, do the um, emotion profiling, the individualized emotion profiling, but how to do it, you know. Um, it's, uh, me, it means that it's a, it's a reconstruction of the athlete's emotional experiences uh, related to the successful and the poor performances. So the athlete identifies his or her helpful or also so-called, as I said, functional emotion patterns by selecting four to five positive and four to five negative ones that uh, best describe uh, the emotion related to their individual successful performance in the past. The second point is the same, uh, contains the same structure, but, uh, you know, um, related to the poor performances. So the, the focus of the record is either on the pre-competition state or on repeated experiences uh, across the several competitions with the similar outcomes. And then the athlete rates how intensive uh, or how intense did those emotions feel prior to his or her successful and unsuccessful um, situation, you know, uh, using the a ten item scale, I can say, ranging from nothing to all, and uh, nothing at all, sorry, and uh, going over to maximum, maximal possible. And uh, the figure on the left side, you can see the figure two shows us an example of how helpful and unhelpful emotions profiling, you know. So you you can then later on have a closer look at it. And I will move over to the psychological fatigue. And uh, as you can see on the right side, uh, the psychological fatigue uh, can be, you know, the central nervous system or emotional fatigue. So what, what can um, um, increase the fatigue? It's the training monotony, the lifestyle issues, of course, the heavy game competition training period, Pressure plays also, you know, an, a crucial role within this um, fatigue, you know. 
and uh, the new of course also new training techniques which can make the the mental part or i would say the brain very tired yeah and on the left side you can see uh, techniques and uh, how how to cope with with the psychological fatigue you know so it can be done throughout the psychoregulative training the autogenic training the suggestive techniques like also hypnosis and of course also implementing an attractive program and uh, it is possible that the mental fatigue you know impairs players the cap the player's capability uh, to utilize environmental cues and or result in you know changes to attention and decision making strategies so this can be very harmful for the athlete so bear in mind to have a close look on the fatigue of the athlete and i want to emphasize uh, two uh, sports psychology techniques which can be very helpful uh, for dealing with the fatigue and those two techniques are the progressive muscle relaxation and the meditation and i would like to start with the progressive muscle relaxation and i will give you a short guideline how to do it it will take you around 15 to 20 minutes and first of all i have to say that it, it has shown uh, that the progressive muscle relaxation uh, has a highly significant long-term effect in sport and in particular with helping to reduce the general anxiety and the stress while increasing on the other hand the concentration beside it can be also helpful to reduce the physical problems such as stomach aches or headaches as well as improve your sleep quality so how to do it find a quiet place where you will be not disturbed take a seat or lie down increased chance to fall asleep also you know remove uncomfortable clothing and your shoes take a few slow and deep breaths before you begin and before building up uh, the tension, take a deep and slow breath. Afterwards, squeeze the muscle or muscles as hard as you can for about five seconds and focus on the muscles, muscle you target to tense. The exercise also may cause a bit of discomfort or shaking of the muscles. So don't exaggerate and um, take care to not hurt yourself while while dancing especially when you're doing it for the first first time you know you should never feel intense or shooting pain if you have any medical issues uh, that would hinder physical activity consult your doctor first please and uh, then after that you know after having tensed quickly release the tensed muscle muscles after about uh, five seconds let all the tightness flow out of your tensed muscles exhale while performing this step and uh, remain in the relaxed position for about uh, 15 seconds and then go ahead with the next muscle and after completing all of the muscle groups take your time and uh, enjoy the feeling of being relaxed this is one of the most important things to, to make it easier to remember um, start with your feet and systematically move up or vice versa. So starting from the bottom to the top or top to the bottom. And by dancing and releasing, you know, the muscles, uh, the tension, I can say, of the muscles, you learn not only what relaxation feels like, but also to recognize when you are starting to get tense during the day. Practice the exercise for the first two weeks uh, twice, twice a day to automatize it. And it can be helpful to be guided uh, through the entire progressive max muscle relaxation by a voice. There are many CDs available focusing on the PMR. Besides the positive effect on your performance, your, your body and mind will for sure thank you if you do at least 30 minutes of mental training every day. And uh, over to the uh, last uh, sports uh, psychology technique I would like uh, to address to you today and it's the meditation and it helps you you know it has a re relaxing function it lowers the blood pressure and the heart rate and also you know you know um, it's it's about uh, you know slowly breathing you know being inside you and last but not least it relaxes also your muscles so there is I would say a huge package you know which you can use to to reduce anxiety whatever any issues with the sport psychology but you have to do it on a regular base and that's all from my side now for today 
and I would like to pass over to Massimo again. Sorry, I was I was very relaxed and uh, meditating. So <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dominic, for uh, for this great uh, stuff. And let's go for the last part again. This more this uh, this lesson uh, is going a little uh, long, but uh, I would not take uh, uh, even even longer. So we will go a little fast, and I want to uh, show you the last part. As I was saying before, it was the testa. So. Uh, technique, strategy, tactic, uh, all together, you know, in a, in a, in a whole. And uh, and uh, at this stage, we cannot uh, we cannot uh, separate uh, the, the the things, uh, whether it's techniques or tactic, strategy, and so on. We have uh, discussed a little bit before. Uh, let's go and list some of the aspects uh, to me relevant uh, um, about about this. So analysis, uh, uh, it's called the pro is the is the player. My game, speed, balance, risk factor, and the timeout. Um, okay, the the um, the the sequence is not consistent, so I will go uh, according to the slides. Uh, the first we have the analysis. So analysis is the is essential added value um, has to be in training uh, the, 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 during the training to training analysis the quality of the training has to be constantly monitored uh, and self monitored. So you have to uh, make sure to make the players responsible. We have seen the uh, last week. Uh, uh, we have to check constantly that the, the quality is there. Of course, with the, with the, uh, sometimes, as Dominic say, said before, the relaxation. Uh, but keep, you know, overall the quality uh, always uh, uh, high, and uh, and then try to analyze uh, uh, directly what uh, what's going on. Uh, maybe be some attitude of the legs uh, or maybe slightly uh, late uh, in preparation uh, and so on so let's let's give a reason for uh, for um, everything is happening during the, the the training as well as in the match of course it's not only results you know so finding the reason of winning or losing uh, i have to make it better next time so it's important that uh, i I, I have to understand uh, what what are the, the 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 causes of the things uh, the things happen. Uh, planning uh, the game uh, to play against the player, match analysis is absolutely needed, and at the, at the very end is the tools for analysis. So when I was telling you before uh, uh, regarding the stuff. Uh, uh, yes, it uh, it can be uh, an analyst on uh, for training and match uh, can be done in many different uh, many different ways. Of course, the first uh, uh, is the coach that uh, going straight to the player and uh, uh, you know giving the feedback, getting feedback from the the player as well. Sometimes getting feedback from uh, uh, other people watching you know you maybe you have some colleagues uh, what do you think about that or uh, how did you see that match you know something something like that and uh, and then you you can have a different kind of uh, you know uh, analysis for as i said for the performance for the fitness psychology psychological and so on so we can use the uh, camera or more cameras uh, nowadays uh, we will we will uh, we'll see the other uh, we have seen the other time uh, each player going there with the own camera or maybe the smartphone setting up uh, with the stand uh, in the middle in the corner wherever you know they think is the is the best uh, and then they record many players they just watch you know the the match uh, just a few during even in the in the in the bench you know watching the match and then going over Okay, I have to do this. Everything coming from the uh, uh, planning the match, but this this is coming because you 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 have a good an analysis of the of the things. So it's uh, it's absolutely uh, needed for those players uh, to 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 perform. So the it can be software, of course. Uh, uh, elaborated. We have seen many times in China there is this group of uh, people, you know, being there and uh, uh, taking notes uh, for uh, with the stats, uh, with uh, with uh, 
uh, heart rate, uh, rate control, um, and many other things. So we can have uh, many different uh, uh, tools uh, where we can uh, can be at our disposal to 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 use and uh, to um, to have uh, the best performance. And then also the outsourcing act. Experts. So there are uh, nowadays uh, people doing this. This uh, actually important uh, part of the uh, of the performance of the players. So uh, please um, consider my game. Uh, of course, it's the best tactic ever to play my game. Uh, BFF is the is the best friend <laughs> forever. So it, it 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 is with you all the time. Um, don't take it for granted, you know. Uh, I, I just put a question for you, you know. Do you, uh, do you, uh, what's going on? Something, something wrong today? What, what, uh, uh, what happened? Uh, uh, please, uh, please keep, uh, uh, don't, don't take any action, uh, please. Uh, anyway. Uh, so uh, the, the game uh, I was telling about the the game don't don't take uh, don't take for uh, for granted that, that uh, um, your game is always played at your best. Uh, I was just uh, uh, to 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 think about uh, um, when you when you can see the champion and the, with the great champion. I have some example to give you. You know, so there are some situation where you are a strong player. You play with the weak player, weaker player, and what uh, what you do? Uh, okay, because he's weak. I have a margin. I can, uh, I, you know, I can uh, play. Uh, I can relax. Uh, I can go lobbying or fishing, and uh, I basically I don't play my game. A champion, a super champion, it doesn't it doesn't care who, who is on the other side. He's going if he can win 11-0. He, he, he will win 11 zero, and we have seen actually in uh, in the super top players. Uh, if you remember that final, uh, the women's final in uh, Budapest between uh, uh, between um, Yushivan and uh, Chen Meng, one game finished 11 zero. You know, and at the end she said, uh, you know, I don't want to get distracted even one point. I want to keep my focus. I want to keep, uh, and this is uh, not a great mentality. It's a wonderful mentality. Is how it should be. And, but this is something coming also from uh, young players. Uh, I said the other uh, the other week. So the discipline, the discipline of the playing your game, it's absolutely absolutely important. So and this coming the winning mentality. I was just uh, I was just saying, you know. So uh, even it is a, an abused term. The winning mentality should always be expressed. No exception in training, in competition, whether he's a weak player or a um, regular player, whoever is there, just go straight. Give the proper mentality to your uh, to your uh, to your player. So one by one, but together, I put uh, uh, when you work with professional, you have to consider as a whole entity, as I said before. So remember this, everything is connected. Uh, if something doesn't work, uh, you just just don't consider that problem. Just think about maybe something before happened, maybe something coming from uh, from a previous if i lose a rally if i lose a rally and uh, maybe i miss the last ball maybe it's not because i missed the last ball maybe because the previous the previous ball was not played well and the opponents did uh, uh, a good job and i i missed the last the last ball so let's consider everything don't don't give uh, uh, don't take it for granted as i said before <laughs> Speed, 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 speed. Uh, it's uh, yeah. It's uh, in our brain is a Formula One speed, and uh, it's not what you think. Uh, you know that you have to go uh, super, super fast. It's a smart speed. So a professional player uh, is the is a player that calculates. Uh, let's say let's say like that in a very very short time. So speed of mind. Uh, 
you, you don't have to make a, a lot of uh, process elaboration. OK, if I do this, I can do that. But if I do that, I can do this and then back again. Or maybe I can, by the time you lose the game, you lose the match. So everything happened in, in, in nothing. And this is the, 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 the great part of, uh, of, uh, uh, of uh, a professional player, you know, to calculate, to create the condition. And by the time they perform, they create opportunity maybe to perform even better. Or maybe they calculate to give a certain, certain ball in order to be prepared for the other one. So there is a smart speed inside. And uh, your brain goes uh, absolutely at the uh, super fast uh, and always uh, focus to make the best use of your uh, of your uh, of your skill balance uh, we have discussed uh, in the previous classes the, the the balance where other can make it i call it the perfect imperfection please let me pass this i like it very much actually <laughs> So the balance uh, is uh, is something you know that uh, it expresses the 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 every movement everything you do uh, even even you walk you walk uh, you lose uh, 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 for a very short time the balance to recover with the next step and so on so sometimes it's a very uh, a very um, natural action in table tennis is something that you develop uh, time to time if we have done a good job before we will have players performing unbelievable great uh, by using this uh, specific uh, uh, specific uh, skill so um, uh, the good performance of a stroke involves the restoration of the balance as i was saying before so if I if I lose the, the balance by hitting the ball uh, with the forehand and then I'm not able to restore the balance and get ready for the next. So the balance is that skill that that gives me the ability to make things uh, continuing. So not having a stop is walking is running. So table tennis, which is, is not a cyclic sport. We have somehow to do this incredible, incredible thing, which is uh, making cyclic. So it's 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 a little extreme. I, I I understand. That's why I call it perfect imperfection. But it is like that, guys. It is like that. So if you if you if you if you watch the top players, uh, sometimes we watch our regular player, you know, and they perform in a incredibly with a very poor balance maybe with one leg maybe with the with the uh, the center of gravity extremely low uh, and uh, and uh, and uh, maybe close to the close to the floor they so that's is that is incredible what uh, what they can do and we have to count on this we have actually to count this is a very very special uh, special abilities you know uh, where uh, where you you can uh, really really uh, perform something uh, un exceptional uh, uh, through through this can be done of course in uh, in uh, in a different situation but also during the training during the training you remember before I was saying you know uh, make the wonderful ball you know sometimes we 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 do things because our target is always the same you know we want to do better we want to make it better we want to perform better confidence 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 so everything rotated with that so we try our best to do to do uh, to perform in that uh, in that way so uh, risk factor risk factor is also you know is something again that mm, look behind i put look behind it's conventional and unconventional you have to accept uh, you have to uh, take it uh, as a something pleasant you know so uh, because the players uh, are there they have that feeling, you know, it's not that uh, we can, uh, you know, we can, uh, uh, um, yes, we can advise them, but we, we cannot impose them to say, uh, oh, risk, risk uh, the, the next ball, you, you do something crazy, you do something. 
it's not working like that. It's very connected, you know, with the, with the, um, several uh, several factors, you know. So the anticipation skill, remember uh, the tactical need. Uh, maybe you can uh, give some uh, some sort of a message to the opponent. You're know, surprising the opponents and so on. Uh, it, it is uh, it is dictated uh, by the desire to amaze oneself. So you you want to actually in the very topic moment you want to test yourself. Can you imagine? You want to test yourself because it's it's is is your inside battle. You know you want to you want to show something absolutely uh, exceptional. Uh, the pro that was uh, in the beginning, of course, uh, uh, is the is the highest meaning. Uh, pro at the pro level, as usual. Um, how is the techniques of a pro? This is a, this is a very um, very interesting question. You know, it it, it is a, it is a something well defined as a flexible in its uh, expression. So the ability to to do so many things in a very short time, using the proper techniques, sometimes using wrong techniques. Can you imagine it's using wrong techniques? So. Uh, it all it's all part of uh, how they can uh, how they, they make the best use of the the the, the technique. Let's start with, with we have a few things we have just three uh, impact on the ball. They have this amazing ability, you know, to 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 manage the ball from zero power, zero speed to maximum speed to any speed. From zero spin to end spin. It's not just speed, it's not just spin, but they have this ability, you know, to, to calculate, to, uh, to handle, to uh, give a sort of, a, you know, power, like the volume of the, of the loudspeaker, you know, you can adjust. And this is the pro, you know, this is uh, how they, they, can, uh, they can make uh, the impact of the ball a superpower that from outside we can, maybe we can see, ah, that is that's wrong, you know, they have, uh, they have hit the ball too, too, too harsh. And uh, how can this can go? But they have the ability to handle it. So maybe if made by a kid, maybe we have to pay attention because it's, they are in a, in, a, in, a, in a PhD, they are, a, they are in the university, they are not in the, in the primary school. So remember what they have done in the past and then is coming uh, to perform in this, uh, in this moment. Similarly, is the kindness of a touch, you know. So again, uh, uh, it's not it's not the feeling. Uh, yes, normally we we consider them. Oh, they have a great feeling. Is more than that. It's really more than that. Is the perception? Is the perception to 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 give the proper the proper touch uh, uh, on the ball? Uh, with sometimes relax the, the wrist, uh, uh, squeezing the squeezing the, the grip, uh, relaxing the grip, squeezing the, the, the shoulder. Th their body is the per is the, the tool. I don't know how to explain. It is like that. It is unbelievable like that. And the uh, uh, last part is the connection. Uh, uh, again, technique is, doesn't come by chance. It all connected. As if we have done a good work before, you know, using the the ability to keep going, to uh, not to stop in between. Uh, the other day I was watching one uh, one uh, some good players uh, a video, and then I, I was said this guy cannot make that point. I didn't watch before, so I didn't know. He cannot make that point because he was late, uh, ball after ball. In fact, he lost the point. He could not reach that uh, that ball because he was not able. No, she was not able to to connect uh, uh, all of them because she stopped in between. And if you don't connect the things, uh, you you are not able to 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 perform. So yeah, I, I ended. The, you know, whoever stops is uh, is lost. So it's something is something like that. So we have the the uh, the, um, the last is the timeout. Uh, I would say the unknown, unexplored territory actually. So uh, can you can you think about we we don't train for a timeout. 
because we think that is something comes, something that uh, appears, you know, magically. Uh, we don't know when. Uh, uh, maybe we we don't even prepare this. Uh, we can create some scenarios, some mental scenarios as a coach or players. Sometimes is the is the player that goes ah time out time out they they leave the racket over there they go back to the bench without giving any sign to the to the <laughs> to the to the umpires that they don't understand who caused the time out no it's that player that no maybe it's that player so they get confused so is wrong and uh, uh, please teach them uh, to uh, to give a proper sign uh, to to do the tie uh, time out uh, uh, properly it's not just a mem a moment of you know losing the the temper and uh, okay time out it, it's not like that so we don't actually actually train uh, normally we can do this you know so we can make them during the training session um, even the six points toweling have you ever seen the, the players doing a match training in the in the in the training venue and then stop every six points hmm some maybe some maybe some so when we have a training match in the in the venue, let's do it properly. Having six point toweling, having six point toweling. Uh, you want to stop maybe 10, 8, it was 10, 6, 10, 8. Okay, time out, take them out. So we have to create the, the situation, which is not difficult, super difficult to create the, the competition situation in the training hall. So let's also start, uh, let's also start with this. Um, yeah, when to call the timeout? Maybe after a negative sequence, I lose uh, three, four, five points in a row. I'm a coach, okay, I can feel it. Uh, uh, okay, maybe he can make it now. No, it doesn't make. Oh, maybe he can make it now. No, it doesn't make. Okay, timeout. Or maybe a match point uh, with your point, uh, with your match point, maybe sometimes with the opponent's match point. Uh, in the beginning of the game, in the middle of the game, uh, losing 3-0, time out, please time out. Or uh, during the decider, you know, the last uh, last game. So it's very much relating with the uh, with the with the feeling. Uh, why to call the time out? Yes, restoring the focus, of course. Uh, uh, finding a new solution. I'm not able to come out to this uh, situation. Uh, maybe preparing a surprise. Uh, recall making the, the player calm and then uh, making thinking better. Uh, OK, you know that now, you know, he's stepping around uh, a lot. Why don't you play a couple of balls on the forehand and then try to, you know, get back to the situation, get control of the ball and so on. So uh, we call the timeout for different uh, situation. I just put some questions there, but uh, uh, you are familiar with this and you can think about. Uh, and then this is another part with my serve, with the opponent serve. In between, there are some mechanisms. They are not the same, you know. So after one minute of timeout, and uh, maybe you have done your serve, uh, and then after one minute you have to perform a good serve. After a break of one minute, so, ha! Huh, sometimes uh, I would I would dare that maybe. Nine out of the ten, the ball, the serve will be long. There is not that feeling that, uh, you know, thing that going uh, uh, fluently. Uh, it's, it's an interruption. So being an interruption uh, can create some uh, destabilization. So uh, maybe calling the timeout in the, in the opponent's uh, uh, sequence in between, this is maybe can be a good solution thinking to use the timeout also for that one, and well, we can we can think uh, um, different situation. As I said, uh, actually there are only three with my serve, with the other serve in between mine, in between their uh, serve. And uh, um, I think uh, I stop here. This is uh, this was the last. Actually, I have uh, one uh, one more. Uh, last thought, uh, well, of course, uh, learning, apply, testing, how to coach, uh, you know, improvement, uh, you can improve like, uh, like players. So um, know your players and, uh, and uh, uh, please have in mind to improve uh, all the time. 
Uh, well, I conclude uh, before giving back the, the, the words to Dominic, uh, this uh, cycle of four. I hope uh, uh, you like them. You can put all four together. Uh, you can review, you can write us. Uh, if you notice uh, each topic we have touched, can generate more classes, more lessons. So maybe in future we will have more uh, more lessons uh, uh, of each topic. So we have uh, ideas. If you want to send us uh, your ideas, uh, very welcome. Uh, we are here to 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 help you. So let me let me uh, uh, thank the entire high performance and development uh, team that is behind uh, this uh, this uh, huge work. I have to say. Polona is the is the backbone of our uh, department. Thank you, Polona. Dominic, great help, uh, good contribution, uh, uh, amazing from uh, your side. Uh, Dora, you are on the back. Us uh, try to uh, adjust everything. Uh, the presentation uh, not important, super important. Cassia, you are there always with your expertise uh, during the calls and so on. Thank you very much, Cassia. Moncho, you make me so comfortable. Thank you very much for uh, your uh, for uh, existing. And uh, yes, uh, this, uh, this uh, work is dedicated to all coaches uh, of the world. And uh, with this, uh, I stop. I thank you very much one more time. And uh, back to you, Dominic. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Massimo, for sharing with us your knowledge and the ideas regarding how, how to work with the players on the pro level. So, grazie mille, Max. And uh, <laughs> I want to thank all of you for your interest and attendance. And we, we hope that we could have helped you with the four lessons. Respectively, maybe we have strengthened your, your current way, your coaching methods and giving you new ideas uh, how to work with the different age and level categories. Uh, stay tuned uh, for future initiative of the ITTF High Performance and Development Team. And I would uh, also like to thank all uh, the entire ITTF High Performance and Development Team for the great job. And uh, that's all from my side for today. And uh, pass over to you, Max, and I kindly ask you for the very last closing words. Yeah, well, uh, after uh, all this, uh, really, it uh, was a great uh, four, uh, four weeks, uh, intense, uh, intense work. Uh, trust me, we have, uh, we have put uh, not only the knowledge, uh, something behind the knowledge uh, in order to give you the, the best, uh, uh, best of us. And uh, now we will take uh, a break. Uh, the summer is August, but more initiative will uh, will come in uh, in future. Again and again, thank you very much. Have a great summer. Please uh, uh, be safe, uh, healthy, and uh, love table tennis. And uh, ciao. Have a great summer. Ciao. Bye.